take advantage of this moment. One, because I have your attention. <laughs> and two, because you're here. And because I think we, we studied from Hebrews chapter 5 that when we are dull and sluggish, um, we're unable to release the things we need to release for a generation. So I want to take a few minutes to present to you. Last year when uh, Apostle was here, we launched our housing project, Ikaya Bula Genesis. And in the spirit of accountability, I went to Wolfbeck and I, I, I was just sharing with um, my dear brother, Pastor Poju. I went to Wolfbeck in January and I, I got, I was listening to the word of God being ministered by the great men of God and women of God there. And I was just, I listened to some things that Apostle taught and I got a righteous anger. Something in me just got triggered. Even if we're here doing homes and all, something bigger was actually in the offing. I remember Apostle saying to me that there's a unique grace that is on my life and I think it made me study a little bit deeper exactly what has been going on. I came back home very disturbed. In fact, for those who know, I tell you about an encounter I had in Nigeria this January to just come back and look at things afresh. And... I want to do something this moment I have. I hope I'll get another chance tomorrow to also push it a little bit further so that awareness comes to the people of the kingdom, not just in Kenya. This, what I'm about to show you is not just for Kenya, but it is something I believe that God wants us to wake up to. Because in Nigeria, when I was in that time and when I started hearing those words flowing through my spirit, my agitation could not stop. The over-reliance, and this is not against governments. We have to work with governments. But our over-reliance on governments as the kingdom of God sometimes pushes us to a place where we are unable um, to do the things we need to do. The welfare of the people given to us by God as shepherds, both kings and priests that are among us, is something we must take cognizance of and position ourselves properly for. So... I have a presentation that I will go through. I hope you can see your screen because we also came to transact. Amen. I'm not here to ask for your money. I'm here to show you something that I believe is important. As we look at transforming Africa together, what is the role of the kingdom of God? My spiritual father was teaching us about kings. The language that has gone on here for the last few days has been a language of kings. Do you not agree with me? And the language of kings is such that we must be able to see things as kings do. Daddy said that one of the problems we've had in the church is that we are very busy um, focusing heavily on just the raising of priests. Yet we must be aware that the raising of kings is equally important, especially in our time. This morning... When Pastor Poggi was ministering and he dealt with some things, uh, the video he showed us at the end just started landing exactly where I felt I want to come and share these things with you. So, what are the challenges we have? Our children are not getting the right type of education because high cost education, I mean high, high quality education is inaccessible because of its high cost. When we talk about housing, People have limited access to housing. I want to help you understand why we are having lunch sponsored by KCB today. Um, healthcare challenges, how we're building hospitals, how we're doing the things we're doing, lack of opportunities. I had a church member who took their children to um, the UK for education, and they decided they, they were so patriotic, they came back home, and after two years, their children have been trying to get work in Kenya. It's very frustrating for our children to go out, get the wisdom and education, and cannot be able to find jobs. So, what do we do? I think every journey begins with a step. So when I was in Lagos, and I don't know why God chose Lagos, but when I was in Lagos, God woke me up, and something began to just be so stirred up in my spirit. 
Because we just can't use the terms apostle in the marketplace loosely. That means there's an assignment. And what is that assignment? How does it change the lives of the children of God? Now, for the last few months, I've spent time talking to different groups, talking to different industries, working to understand what this is that we must do. So, I'm going to show you an example. If we look at commodities, let me talk about rice. Right now, I want you to know that the kingdom of God is responsible for making billionaires across Africa because of this one commodity called rice. Let's talk about sugar. The kingdom of God is responsible for all this consumption happening in Africa. And interestingly, the wealth that we're helping everybody else make has no benefit to the kingdom of God. So, we happen to spend all our money on external economies and nothing ever comes back into the kingdom. All these great banks there, my friends that are here and all these other people, we put our money there. But where is the kingdom benefit? How does it change your life? How does it change my life? So if I look at this, I want to create a system. Somebody say kingdom commonwealth. I want you to say it again. Say kingdom commonwealth. This vision was birthed in Nigeria. And God put this understanding to help us become better stewards of the resources that he has trusted us with. So under Kingdom Commonwealth, I started looking at how do we change how we are consuming what we are already consuming? How do we make sure that children in the kingdom can benefit from this? And how do we become the greatest ambassadors of this message that I feel must go to Zambia. Bishop Bruce is here from Zambia. There's a team from Botswana that is here coming to understand Kingdom Commonwealth. I was in Botswana and I took, I took them through Kingdom Commonwealth understanding. I was in Botswana. We have teams that have arrived here from Botswana to just digest further this Kingdom Commonwealth. Because if we're going to say Kenya is the birthplace of revival, could it be that our revival is going to be, this revival that God has given is going to be multifaceted in many ways? That this revival has something to even do with the economic outlook of the people of God. I shared with you that a shepherd's work is that the product of the shepherd is the sheep. And how the sheep appears in the marketplace shows you the kind of shepherd that they have. Our work is not just to speak to you on a Sunday. Our work is your welfare. So let me give you an example. Mamanjeri's farm. Mamanjeri has a rice farm. And if I want you to go to a supermarket after we are done, not, not now, but when we understand this vision, and I want us to agree something, that from now on, we will buy our rice. Mm. I'll stay on that until you get it. Tutanunua mchele yetu. Tutanunua uskari yetu. Tutanunua unga yetu. Unga ambayo inasaidia na school fees. Unga ambayo inajenga ma hospitali. Tunaelewana. Because right now, some of the commodities you're buying are building temples. Hmm. I'm going to just stay there. You see, believers, you don't understand. So what is our assignment? Kuna kitu tumekuja kuchafua. Kuna temple mahali ikona. There's a temple somewhere, and I don't want to disrupt other religions. I just want to help you understand. There's a temple somewhere with three cows, not too far from where I live. Those cows are taken better care of than you've ever been taken care of. And you finance it. You finance the building of the land. You finance the purchase of the land. You finance the, the building that those cows are being taken care of. Indirectly without wisdom, you financed the worship of idols. Because even if we hold these conferences, it doesn't matter. Nobody is intimidated by our assembly. But when we start to shake those things, I can assure you, 
our meetings shall not be ignored. So, I want to trace this rice. And I want to trace it from the store. I don't want to use any store's name because I don't want any store to say you promoted this store and didn't promote ours. But you know which stores we have in Kenya. You know which ones you have in Zambia. I was in Zambia and most of your supermarkets are actually South African owned. True or false? We don't have our own malls. We don't have our own supermarkets. So you look at this rice. I trace it from the store. But it had been bagged and tagged. And I can be able to trace it down even from the rice aggregation and from the processing down to Mama Jerry's farm. So that I can be able to tell you when you buy this rice, I can trace the owner and I can trace that she benefited from this produce and she's a believer and I can account for the journey of how that rice has helped her and how you yourself have been able to help the food chain. Now imagine if we can do that not just with Mama and Jerry. But what if I could do that in Botswana? Do that in Nigeria. Some of the billionaires in Nigeria are because of commodities. When Apostle Sego has come here from Switzerland, please don't consider me foolish. Whatever you do, don't think of me as foolish. When I heard there's an African man of God in Switzerland, sir, I don't mean to be rude, but for me, it was a connection. Because Switzerland is not just any other place. It's one of the four capital financial centers of the world. So when we're handling billions of dollars, we have to look at this differently. Let me give you other solutions we're looking at. So if I can trace that rice back to our community, we can trace a chain about why we are doing what we're doing. And those that are watching online, I want you to listen to me very carefully. When I look at housing, Last year, we launched this housing. What was the problem we were trying to solve? Many people are building houses. But remember my story to you. I told you I was a waiter in America. And by the time God lifted me, I came back home. One of the rules when I was giving my team the instructions on how we are going to build is that if a waiter can't afford our homes, they are too expensive. So we had to sit and look at formulas disturb our heads because we could sell these houses for five times the price that we have built them for but we chose not to because is there not a cause so i'm not here to give you theory i'm here to give you practicality now those of you who are kenyans you know where ngong road is you know the price of land on gong road can we all agree that for the next generation to afford houses in nairobi only the wealthy can afford it so what is the role of kingdom people? We have to come and look at this. So this is just one, but I want to use it as an example. Because I don't want Rem office to just be a place you come and get inspiration. I want it to be a place that every year we can give a report. How far have we gone? What have we done? What have we accomplished? So that next year, I'd like Apostle and the entire prophetic team to come and be praying for our rice our sugar, packaged, everything that we are presenting in our stores. Let me get here quickly. So, look at Angela. A benefit of Kingdom Commonwealth. What is she doing? She's overcoming housing affordability issues. What is the housing affordability issue? I can't pay the deposit. I'm already paying rent. I can't afford to be able to... Um, so, how does a person working at Java... A young person, a Gen Z, afford a house in Nairobi. They have to live far from Nairobi, spend their entire income on transport. By the end of the month, they are busy making someone else wealthy, but they'll never become owners themselves. How do we solve these problems in the kingdom? The first people to build the sheep gate in the book of Nehemiah, the first people to come out and begin working who are the priests because they folded their sleeves and they hung up the sheep gate and its doors. The first people that demonstrated how it's possible were from the priesthood. So when we come here, it's not to have the monopoly, but to show you these things are going to happen. Amen? So, what have we done? Through KCB, and that's why they are here, we sat that for 16,000 shillings a month, you can own your home. 
thousand shillings. Apostle, that is a hundred and twenty dollars a month in Nairobi. Can you show me by a show of hands how many of you can afford a house in Nairobi now? There you go. So, what have we done? I've done my homework. I've done my part. But I can't own the house for you. So you have to go there, take your home, and become a homeowner, and continue growing and growing. And guess what is at this complex? At the bottom of that complex is our own supermarket. Ah. Our own supermarket, so that that sugar is there, and that juice is there, and I can trace that juice to a believer. Mm. I can trace the flour to a believer. Most of you will go to a butchery after this in a supermarket and you will buy halal meat. Which means you have just financed a kingdom. Believers, are you hearing me? So we have come to disrupt something. And we've come to change a particular equation. Because now what I want you to do is that you not only have your affordable home, because let me assure you, Right now, conference after conference, our city is being bought out. And it is not by Christians. Am I lying to somebody? Believers have sold homes in South B, South C. I happen to have the privilege of having one of the people who has come to help me in this work. Please stand up, Madam Namla. And, and I want you to see her from South Africa. She's the, one of the advisors, economic advisors to President Ramaphosa in South Africa. This problem is not a Kenyan problem. They have the same problem in South Africa. They have the same problem in Zambia. I was there. The same issues in Botswana. The same issues in Nigeria. Because when I look at the rice industry in Nigeria, it has owners. So, but who is eating? Who is buying airtime? So if the phone companies are recording record profits, who made the profits happen? Yet our churches are dilapidated. We don't have homes for our members. So David asked, is there not a cause? Please put my presentation back up. So we want to sort out home ownership. We want to look at education. We want to look at many things. I don't have time because I want Apostle to start. I'll have some time tomorrow because I want to dig this thing into you. So I want you to take your phones out. So I want to show you what we're going to do in education. I was in Atlanta and I met the president of this university. And when we started talking, I said, sir, I want solutions for the kingdom. Don't give me English. I don't want a lot of English because let me tell you, when we had a cabinet secretary from another religion, one of the things they did is that they released more than four university charters in less than five years. So that tells you that the sons of Ishmael are getting their act together as far as education is concerned. But where are believers getting their opportunity for education? I want you to watch this for just a minute. They have a video here. Welcome to Beulah Heights University's Kenya site, your gateway to world-class education right here in Africa. At BHU, we are dedicated to empowering students across the continent with both in-person and online programs that cater to diverse needs. Whether you're seeking a degree in business, leadership, or religious studies, our programs are designed to provide you with the skills and knowledge necessary for both academic and professional success. Villa Heights community, I present to you Dr. Julian Kiel. I believe in life we're all given an opportunity to make a difference. Enroll today and take advantage of the Africa Outreach Scholarship, exclusively available to our students in Kenya and across Africa. Join us at Beulah Heights University and start your journey towards achieving your dreams with a globally recognized education. Be part of a community that is shaping the leaders of tomorrow. So what happened to my brother Donald and I? We were in America. 
we worked two jobs to be able to get degrees. I went to America and I negotiated with this university. They gave an Africa outreach scholarship of 75%. And you can do that degree in two years from here. And they're here. They're at the back. The point I'm trying to make is we're going to go all the way down to tertiary, to primary, even to kindergarten education. So that good education does not become the prime of a particular set of 1%. There's a lady called Madame Jane. She's here. She's doing an amazing thing, and I, and I hope one of these days you get to hear what they're doing. But she gave me shocking statistics that in Kenya, only 0.02... Madame Jane, I'm looking for you. Where are you? What was the CBK statistic for SMEs? That, um, corporates that are doing... 0.002 percent of Kenyan corporates are the only ones that do revenues of over a hundred million shillings. In other words, top companies in Kenya, only less than 0.002 percent are doing $700,000, not of profit, revenue per annum. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to disrupt this thing and we have to change the narrative for our children. So education has to change. Things have to change. So the houses are now available. The education is now available. We are going to change dynamics, which means as you buy rice, we start to look at what are we going to affect because what we have as believers are numbers. And we have to use our numbers for something. Are we together? We are going to use our numbers for something. So I want to show you what you're going to do. We are going to change certain things. Even the expressways being made from Nairobi to Mombasa, I want to see believers owning petrol stations. We should fuel our cars in our petrol stations. We should buy our own toothpaste. Oh, glory be to God. We should buy our own. Are you understanding me? Because this thing has been spoken for so long. But I believe what our fathers did, they built amazing, amazing churches and God enabled this generation to break something for us. I can't compete with my father on building a church. That is not the dimension of our generation. For what my father did created an environment to enable me to operate as a king. So what we're going to do is that, because if we do that, children of God, it means even the ships bringing the oil shall be ours. Oh. We have to change the system. So I ask God, what should we do? I need to finish. Because I know you came to listen. Take out your phones. Register. Star 789 star 322 hash. I created an app. And that app will be ready at the end of September, both on iOS and Android. On that app, we will begin to distribute our own things. So when that app is ready, you begin to see that this is our sugar. When you go to these supermarkets, buy that sugar. I'll be in South Africa to launch this Sometime in January, I'll be in Botswana to launch it around November. I'm going to go around the world bringing kingdom people together and to say from today, stop buying outside of the ecosystem. My sister worked for a particular community who own hotels across Africa. And she said even a spoon cannot be bought outside of that community. It is only Christians who don't understand the power we have when we come together. Because if we need Apostle, during COVID, we went and lined up at hospitals. <laughs> we discovered very quickly these were not our hospitals because another group of people would come and go in and get their shot and go out in five minutes while we lined up for four, five, six hours. You very quickly discover these are not ours. And when the rubber meets the road, you'll be shown this is not yours. It's time to build our own. So look at somebody say, it's time to build our own. There is no cost to join Kingdom Commonwealth. So the app is called KCW. It will be on Android and iOS, and it will be global, which means when you go back to Malawi, when you join this app, even airtime, you will buy from here. 
It means in Nigeria, your airtime will be bought from here. Glory to God. When you buy your airtime, we can come and build hospitals in Lagos. We can support the ministries of great men and women of God. It means we can talk to Apostle Sego in Switzerland and say, we need to start, listen, to build houses, I don't need money, I need instruments. And one of the places I can get instruments is in Switzerland. Because if I have a $2 billion instrument, I can build all these houses across Africa. And we can create employment and change how people are living. Ladies and gentlemen, are you going to help me? I want to hear from the back because at the front I know you are nice people, but I want to hear from the back. Can we do this? Gen Z's, are you with me? Are we tired of being tired? We will build. You will live in this city. Nobody will push you to the outskirts of Nairobi. This is your city. And we are going to build, we are going to change, and you can hold us to account. When the app is ready, what is going to happen? What you've just done with your phone is simply register. But you're giving me permission to just communicate with you and tell you the app is ready. Go in now. Do I have your permission? I'm willing to stake my reputation, my everything on this because I was visited by someone from one community and they said to me that this sugar... <laughs> These malls we have built in certain parts of Nairobi happened because of one commodity called sugar. So instead of harambees in our churches, we can empower our people to not buy any other unga, to not buy any other rice. We can build those schools. Jane, we can help with the work God has given you. But let's all become one. And this thing does not know which church you are in. Whether you are Anglican, hunger is hunger. Pentecostal, hunger is hunger. We will change things. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. I hope you've received my simple message. Amen. Amen. So go and join Kingdom Commonwealth because this is what I'll be doing for the next 10 years is going around the world and sensitizing them that we are no longer just importing sugar to import sugar. We are doing something different with our community. I want you to become my ambassador. Help me get that thing to over a million people. And each of you go and get 10 people to get into Kingdom Commonwealth. In Uganda, I'm asking Apostle Grace to be my ambassador. In Zambia, I'm asking my brother Bishop Bruce to go and become my ambassador. Bishop Stima is already sending people to me to become my ambassador. Because where are the numbers? They're in the church. I want everybody that is going to talk to 10 people to get into Kingdom Commonwealth to stand up. You are my ambassadors. Today I'm, today I'm talking kingdom language. If you're going to be, God bless you. God bless you. My God. Thank you, Pastor T. Come on, Pastor T. Stand up here with me. Look at the Gen Z's. All of them saying that time has come. We have to do this. We have to change things for our generation. This is the dawn of a new day. I feel God is going to display his kingdom in our time. God bless you, my brother. This man, God has called him for this generation. Amen. Love you, sir. Are you ready for the word? Are you now ready for the word?